Hey everybody, in this video we're going to look at the power rule with rational exponents. So the plan here is to extend the power rule for differentiation to include rational exponents. We'll look at several examples and we'll work out a proof. And the main ingredients of this proof are the power rule for natural number exponents, which we've examined in a previous video, implicit differentiation and the quotient rule will make appearances, and the laws of exponents are critical. We're gonna be manipulating all sorts of combinations of terms that requires you to know your laws of exponents. So review those if you need to. And we're also going to just uh, have a quick refresher on the nature of natural numbers, integers, and rational numbers, just to make sure we understand what these key players are. So here's our cast, the natural numbers. Often uh, this set is denoted with a black board bold n for natural numbers. They're essentially the counting numbers, one, two, three, and so on. The integers are often denoted by blackboard bold z, coming from the German name Zollen for number. And here you have the counting numbers as well as zero, as well as the negatives of the counting numbers. And finally, the rational numbers are going to be uh, denoted by Q as in quotient of integers. And it's the set of all P over Q such that P and Q are integers. And we don't want Q to be zero, of course. So with that modest restriction, we're otherwise going to look at quotients of integers. So these are the rational numbers. And of course, examples of rational numbers are just any old uh, fraction you can create um, with uh, integers. And, uh, but it's worth pointing out that if you let the denominator be one and use any integer p, then you recover the integers, which is just a way of observing that every integer is a rational number. And so we have the inclusion that the set c is a subset of q. And of course, every counting number is itself an integer. So we have this chain of inclusions. n is a subset of z is a subset of q. All right, and of course there are non-examples of rational numbers, i.e famous irrational numbers. Um, square root of two is not rational. This is an ancient, uh, this, this fact has been known since ancient times. The first known proof we have is in Euclid's Elements circa 300 before the Common Era. Um, uh, e, the number E is not rational. Uh, Euler proved this in 1737. And uh, pi is not rational. And a proof of this appears in the work of uh, Johann Lambert in the 1760s. So the power rule for natural numbers uh, we've seen before, and, and it's simply stated, suppose n is a natural number, counting number, and you take the derivative of the function x to the n with respect to x, you're gonna get n x to the n minus one. So this pattern plays out in a pleasant way, and so you have this um, sequence of examples. Um, it's worth pointing out that there's one example here, the derivative with respect to x of x itself, now, we, we shouldn't need the power rule to do this because if you can picture the function x, it's just a linear function, the slope is one everywhere. So the derivative should be one because the tangent slope is constant, it's always one. But if you look at this in the context of the power rule, you realize that x is x to the first power. And if you apply the power rule, you're gonna get one times x to the zero, x to the zero is constant, it's one. And so it works in that case as well. All right. So now what we wanna do is swap out natural number exponents and put in rational exponents instead. So suppose k is a rational number, that is we can, um, we can write it as the quotient of a pair of integers with the denominator of course being non-zero. And uh, we claim that the derivative of x to the k in this case is simply k x to the k minus one. So the power rule will continue to hold when our exponents are rational numbers, not just natural numbers. So let's take a look at some examples first. Let's imagine the derivative of the square root function. Well, laws of exponents, um, we know that the square root function can be written as x to the one half. And so taking the derivative of the square root of x is really taking the derivative of x to the one half. And now if we apply the power rule for rational exponents, we find the derivative is one half x to the negative one half. If you wanna rewrite that, you can write that as one over two times root x. 
Let's look at the derivative of 1 over x to the fifth. Once again, using laws of exponents, 1 over x to the fifth is the same as x to the negative 5. So we can rewrite our target of differentiation here. Derivative of 1 over x to the 5 is actually the same as the derivative of x to the negative 5. Now we're going to apply our power rule for rational exponents. You pull down that power, negative 5, x to the negative 6, or negative 5 over x to the 6th. And finally, the derivative of x squared root x. So we're going to combine these terms because uh, we can rewrite this as x to the half times x to the 1 half, add exponents. This is one of our laws of exponents here. So this is the same as taking the derivative of x to the 5 halves. And once again, the power rule will tell us that that derivative should be 5 halves x to the 3 halves. And of course, once again, using laws of exponents, we could rewrite that if we wish as 5 halves x root x. All right, so why does the power rule work for rational exponents? What would a proof look like? So we're going to look at the function y equals x to the p over q, where p and q are natural numbers. And our question is going to be, what is the derivative? Now, please note that at least at first here, we shall assume that p and q are both natural numbers, which means our exponent can only be positive. It'll be a positive rational number. We'll prove it for this case first, and then we'll come back to the negative um, option next. So we've got y equals x to the p over q. We're going to raise both sides to the q, and we'll get this relationship y to the q is equal to x to the p. And then what we'll do is we'll take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to x. Now, what we have here, we've got a couple of powers. The power rule for natural number exponents comes to the rescue. The derivative of the right side is just p x to the p minus 1 because that's what the power rule does for natural number exponents. We already know that. The left side is, of course, going to be, you know, we treat it the same way, q y to the q minus 1, except we're taking the derivative with respect to x. We have to remember that we're taking the derivative with respect to x, and that means the chain rule will pop in. We have to multiply by dy dx. And so these two sides have to be equal, and now we're going to solve for dy dx. So first, y to the q minus 1, we'll use a law of exponents to rewrite that as y to the q divided by y. And now we're going to just solve for dy dx carefully. Uh, you want to verify that I've got this calculation correct, but here we are. dy dx equals this. Now y itself, remember, is equal to x to the p over q. y to the q is equal to x to the p. And then x to the p minus 1, we can use a law of exponents to rewrite that. So here's, um, here's what we get when we make those substitutions, apply the law of exponents to the uh, rightmost term there, and you get this expression for dy dx. Now, we can apply the law of exponents quite a bit and divide out these common terms of x to the p first, but x to the p over q times x to the minus 1 using a law of exponents, we can rewrite this as p to the q x raised to the p over q minus 1. Now remember, we've got our exponent here, we can call it k, k is p over q, k appears in both of these positions, so when we recognize that we see that our power rule really continues to work when our exponent is a positive rational number. So let's go back and take care of the negative case. Now we're still going to assume that p and q are natural, but we'll just put a minus sign up here in the exponent and we'll take care of this negative rational case. And we use the law of exponents to rewrite this as y equals 1 over x to the p, x raised to the p over q. And now we're going to take the derivative. We'll need the quotient rule. And we'll have x to the p over q times the derivative of the constant function 1 minus 1 times the derivative of x to the p over q over x to the p over q quantity squared. So convince yourself that this is the right application of the quotient rule. And of course, the derivative of the constant function 1 with respect to x is 0. So that sort of disappears. And we've got x to the p over q. That's a power function with a positive rational exponent. So uh, we just proved that rule works in this case. So we can apply the power rule there. And you get negative p over q, x to the p over q minus 1 over x to the 2p over q, and you'll notice that we used yet another law of exponents to rewrite 
uh, the denominator is x raised to the 2p over q. So now you can rewrite this using the law of exponents as, as x raised to 1 power, which simplifies. Once again, we're just going to identify the power. k is negative p over q. And you can see the pattern uh, sustains is, is, is sustained. And you just get that the derivative of x to the k is equal to kx to the k minus 1. So there we have it for all cases. For every rational number k, the derivative with respect to x of x to the k will be kx to the k minus 1. This works for every rational number. And in fact, the power rule works for any real exponent as well. But we're not going to prove that. That'll be left for another video. But if you run into something like x to the pi and you need the derivative, then it will be pi x to the pi minus 1 power rule actually does work for every real exponent.